after credit scene is a perfect reason why I think I love Gintama so much. After such a badass and serious episode, after that kick-ass fucking music at the end, just seeing all four of them finally reunite, they're together, back-to-back, -back, about to go in and fight against the enemy, we get the ending song, and then after that, the after credits, and that scene, <laughs> Pakuyasa taking Gintoki's really emotional scenes, like these scenes that are one of the most important scenes of Gintoki's character being taken by Pakuyasa in this episode, I'm like, oh my god, and then once all that was done, you see how Gintoki's like, what the fuck is this, like, we were having a badass moment here, the episode ended on a badass note, you're doing this, like, you're ruining it, like, what are you doing, and this man just going on full on rant mode, and you just see the preview sliding in like that for next week, he's like, no, fuck that shit, he's like, no, you're not doing this, I might not be here next week, he's just pushing it over, I'm like, yo, that is the reason why I fucking love Gintama, because Studio Sunrise, I, I just gotta say, I say it a lot, but it really, really makes me happy to see how much you guys love this series. Because anime studios do not do that. They don't go that extra mile. And it's only Gintama I see, you know, a studio go that far for a series. And just seeing what Sunrise does for Gintama. Just seeing when you see that preview sliding in and Gintoki's fighting against. He's like, fuck this shit. Like, what you doing? You're not doing this to me. I'm like, that... It's so funny. It's it's so fucking funny because it fits with Gintama. It's perfect for it because if this was any other series, it honestly wouldn't work. And thanks to the way Gintama has been written, the way the animators have adapted this series since the start of the series, it just leaves it open for stuff like this. And so even if we have a very dark and depressing episode, which this episode had a lot of serious moments in it, which majority of it was serious comedy here and there, but overall completely serious, that finale scene of the episode, it just, it really puts a smile on your face because that comedy wasn't actually there from what I can, you know, what I know. And so when you saw that added in, it was like Studio Sunrise is like, yeah, I know it was a serious episode. And they were very aware. Like, I mean, Gintoki even saying something like that, like, hey, that was a badass conclusion. Why are you doing this shit? I mean, that, that shows that Studio Sunrise is very well aware of what they were doing in that scene. They were just showing that just to get their little, you know, kicks and giggles at just being a little bit silly. Which, I appreciate that, so, I don't know how many really care about that scene, I don't know if everyone even likes that scene, but it's stuff like that is why I continuously watch Gintama. Yes, I love it because of the characters and the badass scenes and stuff, but I mean, just that comedy, it always makes me laugh and chuckle, so, well done, Studio Sunrise. Now, moving on, let's talk about Pakuyasa for a second. So, Pakuyasa... Pretty cool dude. I mean, he's a really cool dude. Uh, he looks exactly like Gintoki. We come to find out that this man was like a disciple of Gintoki. He wanted to be like him, and eventually, you know, being a swordsman didn't actually work out for him, so eventually he started running different shops and all that. You know, he had public indecency, and eventually he's doing like shady jobs on the side, and Gintoki knows exactly where he lives. He has his address, like on speed dial. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? So Gintoki apparently knows who Pakuyasa is. Like, he knows where he's at, where he lives at, and I'm like, Yo, like, we need more Pakuyasa. Like, please don't let this be, like, the final time this man is mentioned in the series. Because this character honestly needs to come back, like, for a whole arc. And I know that, you know, Gintama's in its final stretch. Like, I, I know it's, you know, the final parts of the series is going to probably be mainly serious. But hopefully when the series, you know, is GG, it's concluded... Hopefully Pakuyasa pops up or something, maybe for like a, a party or celebration or whatever. I'd love to see Pakuyasa come back because the way he was introduced, the way Gintoki has like his number and shit, like his address, I'm like, yo, this straight up shows that Gintoki still keeps in contact with this man. This man does talk to him quite a bit and I'm like, I want to know more. I want, I want to see an episode with just Pakuyasa and Gintoki just talking with each other like an entire episode. I would love to see something like that, just seeing how, you know, Pakuyasa wants to be like Gintoki and, you know, how he's just doing things for Gintoki. I would love to see an episode revolving around that. Am I the only one that wants to see something like that? Hopefully not. So, besides that, the opening changed. So, I don't know how many noticed that as well, but the opening song changed this week. And it wasn't that big of a change, but it was a big enough change to really emphasize the joke of this episode. And if you didn't catch it, I want to reveal it now. 
Gintoki was changed out for Pakuyasa in the opening song. If you actually go and watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Pakuyasa takes Gintoki's spot in the opening song, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, it really just nails home the point of this episode of how, you know, Bato, how he was confusing Gintoki for, you know, Pakuyasa, and I'm like, that is just great. Anyways, though, let's talk about the fight. So, Bato versus Gintoki for a second. This... This fight, honestly, is a little bit underwhelming. I, I want to be completely honest here. It was badass, don't get me wrong. I, I thought it was a badass fight, but compared to the previous two, you know, fights we've had, you know, with the others like Sakamoto and Katsura, the fight with Gintoki was completely one-sided, but also it was very underwhelming because it was short. Now, like I said, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying... It didn't last long, and I felt like it should have lasted a little bit longer, but I guess it does show you how powerful Gintoki is, but also how crazy his murderous intent is of how he was confusing someone that could actually see everything, see your mind and all that. So for him to be able to, you know, Gintoki to be able to put that murderous intent up the entire time and confuse Bato in the fight, it shows you how much rage or how much of a fighter, you know, Gintoki is, how good of a fighter he is. So I can understand that, but I felt like, the, you know, the fight should have been a little bit longer because you know it just felt a little bit underwhelming but overall though it was still pretty decent and enjoyable watch the art and animation look good in it so had no problem there anyways next point i want to talk about is the takasugi segment of this episode so takasugi he's finally up this man is finally freaking up and the best way to welcome this man back in gintama's anime is to play his theme song that Oh yes, that, that was fucking awesome. Just hearing Takasugi's theme song just playing in the background, and you see this man just standing up, and he just helps out Bonsai and all that. I'm like, I'm like, yo, Takasugi's back! And when you see how he helps out Bonsai, he slings that knife and all that, I'm like, oh my god. And then he helps out Gintoki at the end. Like, they do that, like, similarity, like, mirror reflection. They help each other out. They exchange blades. I'm like, bro, this is just so fucking badass. Just seeing these four finally reunite. It's something we've all wanted to see for so long. It's been talked about for hundreds of episodes now, hundreds of manga chapters. So many have wanted to see this scene, and I just can't even imagine the long-term fans of Gintama that has been waiting for this scene to be animated, how they must feel about this episode. I bet they're crying tears of joy just to see all four of them finally standing side by side confronting their enemy together and it's not flashbacks. It's present time them working together. I bet the long-term fans of Gintama are just jumping for joy and just so happy right now because of that finale of this episode. So, badass episode of Gintama this week. I can't wait to see where it's gonna go. I can't wait to see, you know, Takasui and Toki, Katsura, and Sakamoto all working together and kicking fucking ass. And also, shout out to my boy Kamui, how he helped out Takasugi while he was falling from the hill. I'm glad, you know, Kamui, you know, helped him out and he's like, you know, my debt is repaid and then he just left him alone. Shout out to my boy, he did a very good job there. So, good man for helping out Takasugi and allowing us to get that, you know, scene at the end of the episode. Because if it wasn't for him, we would not have had that badass scene at the end of the episode. So, good man, calmly. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How'd you feel about this week's episode of Gintama? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. And I love you all. Please be safe. Chibi out.